The following is my interview with grizzly bear attack survivor Bob Lagasa. In 2018, he was hunting elk in Montana with a good friend. But while walking through sagebush, a mother grizzly protecting her cubs ambushed him. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, Bob, thanks for being here, man. I really, really appreciate your time coming on. I know you've had one crazy experience um, that I know somehow may think I have an uh, understanding of, but I have absolutely no understanding of. So tell us a little bit about you, uh, maybe your background, kind of where you're at and sort of uh, how this all happened. Well, thanks for having me, Dan. Uh, I love uh, telling this story and talking more about more than anything about bear safety because I was one of those people who thought, ah, this will never happen to me. Oh, I see bears and yeah, they usually turn and go the other way. Well, uh, it's about five, five years ago, 2018, October 13th, I remember that day, uh, we were elk hunting and uh, we're archery elk hunting. It's early morning. Uh, the evening before, we had located some elk uh, at the back of some sagebrush up on the base of a hillside. And what they do, these elk will come down the, down the mountain, travel through the sagebrush, and come out into some fields that are out in front. Well, we know that there are grizzly bears that like to hang out in this sagebrush just because uh, there's an abundant food source with these elk. Uh, I don't want to say migrating, but just they patterned them. They routinely go through there every day. Well, we waited until we could see the following morning. Uh, going back, we knew we couldn't get in on the elk that evening. So we said, let's come back tomorrow morning. We have a different game plan. Come in from, from back on the side. Well, that next morning, it is snowing heavily. And there's already probably a couple of inches on the ground. Mind, mind you, it's October. And... We wait until we can see, and we parked our truck down the road, probably about a quarter, probably about a half a mile, third of a mile, somewhere in there. <clears throat> we waited till we could see, because we have to cross through a small section of sagebrush, and we thought we would get across that, go up on the side of the hill, and then work our way over to where the elk are, um, and have some sort of visibility um, from a higher from a higher perspective, a higher point where we can possibly see the elk. We don't want them seeing us, but more than anything, so that we can see if there's any bears in that area. This area is known for grizzly bears. Well, anyway, we get down to uh, the area where we can hear, hear the elk bugle, and we're probably about 200 yards away. There's kind of an open swath of probably about 30, 40 yards of really low sagebrush. Now, mind you, the sagebrush is about seven or eight foot tall and when you're walking through it it's kind of like walking through a corn maze you just don't know what's around the other side um anyway so we make our way out to about a hundred yards and there's a kind of a, a couple of tall trees there we position there just kind of wait for a minute we hear the elk bugling again it's like okay they're about a hundred yards away let's deke over to the to our side and go you know about another 30 40 yards over to that clump of trees and we'll cut the distance so that we can kind of just kind of creep our way through once we uh, have some cover well after making about two or three steps from that tree uh going towards the elk a cub reared up and growled and took off the opposite direction oh my gosh and immediately the sow turned and starts barreling straight towards us it was that fast now, that fast. Oh so gosh. she was 15 yards away, anywhere from 12 to 15, not very far. And wow. immediately as soon as the cub reared up, I mean, literally it was probably a second after before mom came out at, at us. My part, my hunting partner and I had both raising our arms yelling, bear, bear, trying to be big. You know, that's what you're taught, you know, try and, you know, be as big as possible. Well, this bear started charging at us and i'm thinking this could be a bluff charge because grizzlies will do that they'll come in and then they'll stop well after the second bound and more than half the distance had been closed i realized this wasn't a bluff charge and i did not want to reach for my bear spray which i had on my chest or my pistol which i keep on my leg um, i just didn't want to be caught 
with my arms down, you know, on oh, my wow. side, yeah, right. trying to grab it unprotected. So I basically just kind of stood there like I was at a bar fight, just arms out, had my bow in my hand, uh, hopefully that that would be a little bit of protection. And I was just hoping that maybe as she's running to me, she would get a whiff of me and just glance on by. Well, that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. uh, as she was literally probably five feet away, I started kind of backing up, and I believe that I, I tripped going backwards right when she hit me. So it wasn't, I don't feel that I had the impact, like, you know, getting crushed by a linebacker, just wham. I was able to kind of help with the fall, and uh, where I was falling backwards and oh she hit gosh. me, so I was already in that direction. So I'm on my, on my, on my butt. I've got my arm, she grabbed my arm when she attacked and basically put her, her paws, you know, kind of around, you know, started kind of around my, uh, my shoulder and just kind of swatting. Oh my God. So her, arm, her arm, mouth is on your arm? Yeah. Oh her mouth gosh. is on my arm and I'm on my, I'm on my butt and I am just blocking with my arm and I'm kicking and trying to get away. And finally... She lets go. I mean, she had me for probably two seconds, but I mean, oh my gosh. Th that's a long time when yeah, you bet when she's tearing up, tearing on me. She rears up, and I remember looking up at her, and I'm thinking, "That's it," and I'm not really feeling anything yet. Then I'm thinking, "Okay, I'm kind of in the clear." I mean, this is in a nanosecond. Then all of a sudden, she just drops down on my right side. I look over and her head is literally about two feet away from my head, same level. I turn my body to protect myself and kind of see what, you know, what's going to happen here. And as I do that, in the corner of my eye behind me, about probably 10 feet, is my hunting partner, Greg Gibson. And he blasts her with the bear spray. And that billow just hits her. She retreats. Now, I've been hit, and she takes off. Well, it dawns on me, the reason that she let go of me in the first place was Greg sprayed her the soon as, when she was on me. Oh, wow. I had no idea about oh, that. Oh, my gosh. And then as she takes off... I'm trying to get my bear spray off of my out of my pack or off my uh, uh, bino harness where I keep it. Trying to get it off of that so that I can be prepared if she comes back for a second attack. I mean, I've heard of this before, like with Todd Orr uh, and several other uh, hikers and hunters, where the bear will come back and get and go for him again. Well, as I'm Pulling that out, I've got the can in my hand. Actually, I've got a can right here. I had it like right here. I pulled back. I hit the trigger. And oh, I mean, man. literally, it was a, I'm not even talking a nanosecond. It was basically like this, just like, and it just went right in my face. Oh, my gosh. So, oh my gosh. yeah, yeah. I had the, the nail was in the coffin there. I mean, I couldn't see before. And I'm, I'm battling, you know, to try and see what I can. And I'm spitting water in my hands from my, from my uh, water reservoir, throwing it in my eyes and everything's just blurry. My face is just stinging. And, um, I don't have a lot of pain besides I can feel that. I mean, I can, I feel that I'm, that I'm bleeding. Um, I could see it like a little bit on my glove when I'm wiping my face. Um, my eyes are just, I mean, Everything is a blur. And I asked Greg, like, how effed up am I? I mean, did she get me? And he's, you know, looking at me. He's like, yeah, you got some scratches, but you look good. And I'm just, because I can't, I can't tell. Um, so now we're standing there for probably a good 15 minutes, you know, yelling, trying to get our vision back. Because Greg lost his vision, too. Um, I mean, it, not like you're completely blind, but it is painful to to, to look uh, to look around. I mean, I was literally having to kind of hold my eyes open just because of the 
I guess, you know, the nerves in my eyes would want to close and uh, protect them. Anyway, so during that 10 minutes, uh, Greg's like, put your face in the, in the snow. There's a uh, sagebrush brush that has like probably four or five inches of snow on it. So I put my face in the snow and it's just, it feels good because it's cool. And all of a sudden I just realized like, I can't see and I can't really hear anything. If anything's going to happen, it's like right now, man, you got to fight for this. Oh my and gosh. at that point, man, I just had my head on alert, fighting for everything I could to keep my eyes open. And as I'm spitting water and throwing it in my hand, in my eye, my left arm or my left hand it starts getting a little bit harder and harder, and I'm hearing kind of a clicking oh, when gosh. I when I cup, and I'm like feeling my arm, like I, I think it broke my arm, but or the, you know I think she broke my arm, but I I don't feel like it's been you know discombobulated or disconfigured. Um, but as that 15 minutes went on to the half an hour, by the time that we got back out to the road. Uh, my arm or my hand was kind of locking up where I really couldn't do much with it. And we ended up deciding to go back up on the hillside the way that we came in rather than going through the sagebrush another couple hundred yards and getting out in the open fields and then making our way to the road. So we decided, no, let's go back up on the hillside where we can see and just a direct route back that way rather than go up to the sagebrush. So when we got about halfway back to where the truck was, we've gone probably, you know, an eighth or a quarter mile. Um, there was a, another open section of sagebrush of probably about 60 yards that kind of ran for several hundred yards to uh, the county road. And we decided that we would go through that. We thought we had enough visibility on both sides that we could, you know, protect ourselves if the bear came out from the sagebrush. And it was, uh, you know, a, a, a seemed like a long walk. It took us a while. We we're having to stop like every, you know, every couple of minutes to try and, you know, put snow on our face, oh water gosh. in our eyes, and it it was just uh, painful as far as that goes. Uh, we made it back to the county road, and I waited there. Greg ran down the rest of, I don't know, a quarter mile or so, and was able to get the truck, came back, and picked me up. So you're sitting was, on the side of the road by yourself? Yeah. Actually, there was a small house that was oh right there. Okay. And uh, I went up there, both Greg and I did, and uh, um, they got me a glass of water. <laughs> Oh, that, <laughs> that was nice. kind of that was kind of weird. Yeah, it's like you know, are, are you okay? You want a glass of water? I'm like, okay. So anyway, I'm I'm bleeding, and I that's when I took a selfie, kind of one of those first selfies that you can see. I wanted to see how effed up I was. Yeah. And uh, at that point, you know, it's like okay, you know, it's not too bad. I could see that I had some um, claw marks right here and right here on this eye, and then a few on on my face. Um, I didn't feel beat up. My arm was not hurting yet, but the hand, I knew that something was was wrong. So Greg picks me up. Uh, we're staying in a, we rented a cabin, uh, probably about a mile down the road, three quarters of a mile down the road. We go back to the cabin. I take off my uh, my raincoat because um, it had been snowing. It was just waterproof uh, camel gear. And when I took that off, I could see all the blood on my arm that was on the fleece that I was wearing underneath it. I didn't realize that I was bleeding that much. So I took my, uh, took that, that fleece off. And then at that point I could see, um, the teeth mark that were right here and the big bottom tooth mark that was right down here on the bottom. And oh that's gosh. where she opened me up and it was just a big flap of skin that was uh, folded back. Um, luckily, there wasn't a lot of muscle damage at that point. Yeah, I could feel it when I was squeezing. And I could actually, at that point, once my shirt was off, I could see my arm had some disconfiguration. So from there, thank goodness, my hunting partner, Greg Gibson, is a 
professional ski patrol. Been on the ski patrol as a professional for over 40 years. So he has a good bag of goodies for first aid. And yeah, wow. uh, we got we got back there. Uh, he splinted me up, wrapped it up, um, cleaned it a little bit just around it. And then we made the, the beeline to go to Livingston, Montana, which is about an hour away. Now, mind you, it is snowing pretty heavy and it's pretty much the first snow of the winter. Um, and as we're getting on the, the highway that goes from uh, Gardner to Livingston, we run into the hunting guide that we work for and we tell him what happened. And he's like, are you guys okay? And Greg's, yeah. And he goes, all right, I'll, I'll kind of get things going. Well, he had phoned the state police, the sheriff's department, the fishing game, and when I and the hospital, and when we, uh, so anyway, we're driving to the high, we're driving down the highway, and like I said, it's snowing, first snow of the year. We're about halfway there, and literally 20, 30 seconds in front of us, this car spins out, flips over on its on its top, and is sliding down the road off the side of the road. And luckily, there were about four or five cars in front of us, so everybody slowed down. And we're driving by, and it's like, do we help? And Greg's, no, man, we got to get going. And, and luckily, we could see that they were okay as we were driving by slow, but all these other cars helped them. Yeah, so that was just a wild day. And then uh, what? when when we get to the hospital... So you you were thinking about getting out and helping these other people that well, had flipped over on their roof of their car when your arm is uh, in the condition that it was? Yeah, I you're, mean, you're a, you are a it, better man than me. I will just well, say it, that right now. <laughs> so, I mean, after after I could kind of see, and we're back in the cabin, and I got this thing splinted up, I'm like, okay, let's go to the doctor. And, you know, I'll get it set, and I'll be in a cast or whatever. You know, my kids have broke their arms on the swing set or whatever, and boom, in and out, you know, a couple hours. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I'm not in a lot of pain. I mean, besides just stingy, and my face is all swelled up, and... Uh, but it's like, you know, you know, when somebody, when something like that happens, I mean, you know, you're there to, to help. Luckily, we can see that they were good and other people were helping. So we drove to the hospital. When we pull into the hospital, uh, we, we walk into the doors. And as soon as like the, the doors open up, the automatic doors, we walk in, there's the reception of the ER room. And immediately, the guy behind the, the, the reception says, over the PA, your bear victim is here. And like, and two seconds later, the double doors to the ER room open up. A wheelchair comes out with a doctor pushing it and two nurses on his side. And it was like the gates of heaven just opened what? up. And it was like they were there on me within... <laughs> I mean, seconds. It was amazing. So anyway, we uh, went into the ER room and uh, kind of started cleaning out, asking, you know, questions. And then fishing game shows up. Takes about five minutes to kind of go through the question. Yeah, probably 10, 15 minutes. Going through all the questions of, you know, where was this provoked? Da, da, da. What happened? Um, do you think the bear should be, you know, brought down? Was she aggressive? And, you know, no, we didn't think she was aggressive. This is what bears do, protecting, protecting their, their young. And then doctors working on me and they do an x-ray and realize that, hey, yes, it's broken. And at that point, he said that the bone, uh, the teeth had gone into the bone and actually oh my gosh. Uh, made indentations in the bone. So he said, you're going to have to go to Missoula, uh, not Missoula, but Bozeman and have a surgeon work on you and we're not going to be able to stitch you up for a little bit. You're going to need to have surgery. Oh it's going to need to be um, cleaned out or flushed out. Well, also during that time, he's like, okay, your eye, he stitches it up and it literally it was like maybe two millimeters away from losing one of my eyes. Uh, the tear duct on it is... Uh, uh, acts up quite a bit like in the winter if i'm driving and i've got the heat on that i get kind of like a i don't want to say a headache but my eye gets really dry and it hurts so i gotta have the air hitting it and then the sheriff came in 
ask the same questions. State police come in, ask the same questions. And uh, within an hour and a half, I'm in an ambulance going to Bozeman. Get to the hospital, same thing. As soon as we pull into the emergency uh, stall that they back those uh, uh, ambulances in, they were on me like within seconds and wheeling me out to do more x-rays and get the flush going. Um, I ended up staying in the hospital for five days just so that they could flush out all the bacteria because if they would have sewn up uh, the, 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 uh, the cuts, the, the bite marks, uh, the bacteria might have become trapped in there. So they had to make sure that that flushed out. Yeah, it was a, Definitely a wild experience, and I'm extremely lucky that it came out the way that it did. And I'm going to tell you, I think the reason that it came out the way that it did was both Greg and I are pretty proficient with using bear spray. Uh, we've done numerous videos on how to properly use bear spray as hunting guides. Uh, we would do that and show that to the client so that it would give them a uh, a good uh, understanding of the use of it. Um, and thank goodness Greg was right there, did not lose his cool, and was able to uh, basically um, stop the attack, you know, from pretty much the start. So, yeah, thankful for that. And uh, So I, you, I, were, you were uh, proficient in bear spray prior to going to this? Yeah, wow. yeah. One thing, the first thing I'm going to tell you that I learned from this Soon as you see a bear, I don't care whether it's a hundred yards away, get your bear spray out, get it out immediately. And then you can be big. You know, that was, that's one of the things that they tell you to do. You know, if you get, uh, be big, kind of walk back slowly, um, immediately get your bear spray out so that you are prepared. And like I said, you can be big afterwards. It only take it, you know, two seconds to do it, but when a bear is charging, you know, from 15 to 30 yards, yeah. we're talking two to three seconds tops, which, yeah, I mean, a, a lot can happen in that time. And so best be prepared on that. Wow. How close were you and your buddy together when that uh, grizzly attacked you? Oh, probably less than 10 feet. Yeah, probably okay. eight, 10 feet apart. That was so why about did, Why do you think it, why did it go after you? Were you the one that startled the... Cub? I was in front. Oh, I wow. was, yeah. You know, okay. I, you know, he was. Greg was right behind me. Um, I, I'm guessing he was about ten feet behind me. I mean, he might have been slightly more, but I'm guessing it was. He was pretty close. Um, just because we were trying to stay as tight together, so we're not giving the elk more opportunity to see two different people at two different times. So, you now he was with me. Did he have um, his bear spray out like you had uh, recommended? Was he? Were you? Were you? Was he? Were, was he walking through the sagebrush with a with an out at all? No, no. Mm -hmm. He had it on his hip, and as soon as the attack happened, um, he was able to to pull it out when I was on the ground and spray her at that point. And uh, then when she reared up and dropped back down again, he was able to you know pretty much get her point blank at you know a couple feet away, just a boom, a big. A big, big dusting of it. How big do you think this bear was? Uh, she wasn't huge, but I mean, as far as grizzly bears, you know, boars can be, you know, 800 to 900 pounds. Oh my gosh. She, but she was probably, I'm guessing, 400 to 500 pounds. Oh you my know, gosh. Pretty good size. But, oh my and the gosh. cub, the cub was almost as big as mom, probably 300 pounds. The cub was two years old. As what is what I think because of the size, and that would have been probably the last year that the cub would have been with mom. Wow! I I, I read a statistic uh, recently from the National Park Service. I thought this was interesting. It says that the chances of being injured by a bear are approximately one in two point one million, according to them. And it says you're more likely to get killed by a bee than a bear, and way more likely to get killed by another human than either a bear or a bee. And I thought that was an interesting statistic. Do you feel like uh, you're, uh, you know, like, I mean, one in 2.1 million. <laughs> I should have bought a lottery ticket. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, no, I, I feel I feel like I got a lottery ticket because uh, I'm I'm here today and uh, virtually unscathed, you know, so I, I feel pretty, 
pretty lucky about this whole thing. Yeah, it was a it was a learning experience uh, on several several levels of you know what to do in the case of an attack and how to be a little bit more prepared. Um, yeah, a couple things that uh, that I really stress: do not put your bear spray on your backpack. <laughs> Keep it on your body, you on yourself. It. Yeah, uh, you know, you take your backpack off to relieve yourself or to just to rest, and your backpack sitting ten feet away, and all of a sudden a bear is on you. You can't get to your bear spray. Keep it on your person at all times. I keep mine on my vinyl harness, which is mounted on my chest right there, yep. and it stays with me from. Morning till I get back to camp, it never ever comes off. Even if I'm breaking down an animal, it stays right there. It stays nice and tight and compact. Keep it on your person. Um, you know that's that's kind of the number one number one thing. And be proficient with it. Know how to take it out of take it out of the holster. How to slide it out of the holster. How to pop the top off, and how to you know to be a, a efficient. And I show that in the, the different bear spray videos that, that we do. Um, you know, it's, it, you just need to be comfortable with it. So how has, uh, how has this changed you? Are, are you, what was it like to go back out on your, on your, or you've obviously hunted again. So you're, you, you've, you've made the decision. Was this just like, oh man, I'm fine. Let's go. Or was, what was that like for you? You know, if I would have been severely mauled, it might be a different story on, my approach, but I've been, you know, five years of spending, you know, weeks on end out there hunting. Uh, and I've come across grizzly bears. Luckily, nothing close. That following year, I saw 13 grizzly bears. Um, yeah. And the year, this two years after that, uh, in another area, had two cubs go blowing out of the, the bushes out in front of us as we were walking to a to one of the uh, hillsides. There was an open open area, and right when we were about ready to the edge of it, the two cubs go sprinting out of there, and immediately, bear spray out, and we're yelling, bear, bear, bear. Luckily, there was no sow around. So, yeah, um, things can happen, and uh, um, I try to be as prepared as possible, and I don't walk through tall sage, I don't walk through thickly, uh, thick forested areas, real brushy. I'll walk around it. I typically try not to walk down through creek beds or cool areas um, that uh, I, that are really tight. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, it, I just try to be as prepared as possible. Was there would there be an opportunity where you'd grab your pistol instead of a bear spray? Yeah, if I was out of bear spray. And if, uh, yeah, and if there was, you know, just if she kept coming back and I was hitting bear spray and it, and it wasn't really working, it was deteriorating. Yeah. Then, you know, it's for me, yeah. it's, it's survival. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, it's not the first, first thing that, uh, that I would do, um, grabbing the pistol, be the bear spray, but pistol would be you know backup and that's pretty much why i have it do you ever do you ever talk to other guys that you know have had this experience i know you mentioned todd or i've had i've had uh, a lot of people reach out to me especially after it um one of them he you know said welcome to the club uh <laughs> and uh what there kind was, of a club uh, is that <laughs> yeah <laughs> um I, I have met a couple people um, one person was, God, this was, you know, he was attacked in the eighties and, uh, luckily nothing too bad. Uh, got his calf. Um, I think he was like, had, had got in a tree. Um, but that's, that's it. Yeah. There's wow. not, not a tremendous amount of people that you run into that have been attacked by, uh, by a bear. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, like you said that. One in two point one million, or something like that. Yeah. So would would um should people? You know, obviously, people that are watching this are thinking, you know, grizzly bears, or maybe I'm from Wisconsin and I'm from the Milwaukee. Uh, just I'm, 
right between Milwaukee and Chicago. There's no bear where I live. And so people, when they hear bear, they just think, you know, bear. So black bear, brown bear, grizzly bear, that kind of thing. Should people be afraid? No, you shouldn't be afraid, but you should be prepared and you should be um, aware of your surroundings. Uh, always be looking ahead and, you know, expect to to see a bear, but don't be afraid. I mean, you know, granted, if you if you're a hunter and you're going in to, you know, retrieve your animal, make a lot of noise. Um, I mean, yeah. if if you're tracking an animal yeah you have to be quiet but be you know be ready to to yard off that uh that bear spray and protect yourself if that if the bear is on the carcass i've had that happen where we come across uh a grizzly that was on one of uh one of the elk kills uh that was a couple years ago and uh, uh luckily we didn't see the grizzly but uh the grizzly had actually dragged the gal's elk down the hill about 30 yards, and it fell into some deadfall. So my friend Greg, he and his hunter, Erica, the elk uh, passed and fell up against uh, some logs. So Greg came back to camp, said, hey, let's go get some manpower because we're never going to get the elk out here. And he pinned it, said, I will come in from the bottom road. We can walk up the drainage and get it out that way. Well, it had snowed that day, and... uh, as we were driving in that night, there were six of us, two shotguns, and uh, you know everybody had pack boards and were you know ready to to get this elk out of there. As soon as we parked the truck at, uh, directly underneath the line of where the pin was, grizzly prints like oh great. <laughs> we start following the grizzly print, or we start you know following our track to get up there from the pin, and that's where the grizzly's going. And uh, so we made a, as much noise as possible. Six guys try not to startle, surprise, let that bear know. And luckily we got there. That bear had drug the, the elk down the hill a little bit into a log pile and actually got like its claw and kind of gutted it. Luckily, it didn't get into any of the meat, but there was some guts hanging out. And, it, you know, another half an hour would have been a whole different story. Wow. So, yeah. Jeez. Yeah. So <clears throat> looking back on everything that's happened to you and what you've experienced since then, um, w- would you have changed anything that happened? Would, could, if you could go back in time and pull this out of your life to have never had it happen, would you do that? No. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I guess I would. I mean, I, I don't want to be attacked by a bear, but I came out of it fine. But my takeaway from it is, you know, what I would have done differently is I would have immediately grabbed my bear spray as soon as I saw that cub rear up. I would have been pulling that out first. So yeah. that's that's the only thing I would have done different. <clears throat> wow. You know, hunting... You know, I, I, I imagine, you know, you've got some of your viewers that are hunters and some that aren't. But, you know, hunters, um, you know, when we're hunting, we're being quiet when we're going in uh, on the hunt. You know, hiking, you can make noise. You know, you don't want to be making a ton of noise where you're just, you know, being annoying. But you want to make sure that you give, you know, a bear, mountain lion, a little bit of warning that, hey, I'm coming down the trail, you know, and um, so it's not a total surprise where you do get attacked. Yeah. Well, man, you this is, I, I don't think I've ever not talked this much during a podcast. So <laughs> uh, this, your story is, is just next level. That's that's amazing. I'm, I, for one, I'm glad you're okay. And uh, I, I'm, I'm glad that you at least have the knowledge now to better help other people in this situation. I mean, I can tell you for, from, I'm a backpacker. And I've been doing that for 10 years, and I've been all over the country backpacking. And uh, most people, I would say, unless you're in, like, grizzly country, don't carry bear spray. Uh, And a lot of people still don't carry in grizzly country, especially when they're hiking, like, down the CDT through, like, Wyoming and that kind of thing. Because there's so many other hikers there 
that they just don't really see a, a value in it or they don't think that there's anything that's going to happen to them because there's so many other people out on trail or maybe they think that the you know the the grizzlies are um a, a, a staying away from the trail because that's where they know where the people are and stuff but um i think you are a testament to preparation proficiency and uh that people probably should be buying their bear spray uh for sure even though it costs you 50 bucks when you when you it's, head out it's good for i think typically three or four years um cheap piece of insurance um and you know like you're saying you're on these hiking trails people leave food bears have got good noses mountain lions you have some sort of protection when you're there um i mean there's california they had that uh, cougar attack here um you know if they if they would have had bear spray they yeah. might have been able to protect themselves. Um, it's it's cheap insurance. Um, I, I highly recommend if you're doing anything outdoors, whether you're mountain biking, hiking, fishing, hunting, whatever it might be, try and keep some bear spray. Keep it on you. I, I see mountain bikers all the time riding with bear spray on their bike. More than likely... When a bear is chasing you, you're probably going to be riding as fast as you can and a good chance of crashing. And if you crash, you're going to get separated from your bike. Keep it on yourself. Yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> most, most important thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Bob, I appreciate it, man. appreciate your time. Uh, anything else you wanted to share at all about this whole situation? I just, um, you know, really, I really stress, you know, being prepared and knowing how to use bear spray. So... Awesome. All right. You're the man. You're a better Sounds man good, than Dan. me. I appreciate you. Brave guy <laughs> getting back I'm lucky. out there. Lucky, oh, yeah, lucky, yeah, lucky. yeah. I think God was on your side. That's what I think. <laughs> yes, definitely <laughs> For sure. was. 